Hello, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of The Gay Human Target. Today, as those Twitter followers probably have known, is the day that we start talking about what really needs to be said. I don't know what's going to happen next, but I'm tired of it. I'm tired of all this animosity being tossed towards my direction. By the time this video airs and has ended, I'm going to have some wants and I'm going to have some needs. And I may look like, actually I probably will do. I, actually, I am going to be. <laughs> this vindictive bitch who's absolutely at the end in the right. And I'm hoping if you are humane, you will absolutely understand where I'm coming. Now, I'm going to do this shirtless because I need the attention. I'm not all that great and good looking or fine or. <laughs> Fuck it. I'm not that great. But I'm humble about myself. Hey, I, I look pretty good for if you were a gay man shopping at Walmart at 8 o'clock at night on Tuesday afternoon. I am. I think so. Like I said, I'm not gorgeous. And yeah, I have no watch on. I don't know why I did that. Oh, but we're going to be talking about some something that's really important to me. Something that has to be said. Why am I whistleblowing? And number two, my feelings on marriage equality. Edith, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to all those advocates out there. I'm sorry to those people that stood for marriage equality. I have a problem. And I believe I'm not being heard. And I'm going to give some valid reasons why. This needs to be said. And if you hate me for it, please at least let those reasons be valid. So, shirtless? Absolutely. I'm not gorgeous, see? Da 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 da. But, that's me. I'm a man that fell in love. And unfortunately, I'm. I'm not allowed to have it. None of my relationships ever work out because of this. And it's the ugliest truth that I have to face. I guess I am a bleeding. So, <laughs> let's get down to business, shall we? <sighs> yes, I'm having a glass of wine. I want to point out, remember those statements in lower end sabbatical about me having a drinking problem, or if not, yeah. Cheers to you fuckers. At the end of this episode, I want to be looked upon, <laughs> looked upon, looked upon. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be known as the tyrant of love. Ah, uh, don't you think? The tyrant of fucking love.
I'm in love with a man that actually I'm tame. Now most of us will probably say, hell, I'm with you there. But here's the difference. I don't know if he actually felt the same, but I know he was interested. And since I've had my few other pursuers do the same thing, in not such deep, that way, that was so obvious, I realized that actually that last moment that I had, that I felt it, I will not let it happen again. Because it's not about them changing me. It's about me changing this. I'm doing this because I want to have that future. I fell in love. Love makes you do some crazy ass shit. I want him. I want all. I want the future selves. Those three delinquents that I want to see what I sacrificed, what I'm doing. I want them to understand it. So. Here we go, Daniel Goldman. If you can see this book, it's called Emotional Intelligence. A very good book to read. I suggest you all read it. Read it again, read it again, and read it again. Because it's not just about being higher educated. It's about also being emotional intelligent. Here and here. Know thy own self, motherfucker. Negative thoughts and positive thoughts. And be able to fucking suck it up and know why you're doing the things that you do. That's being human. And to those fucking sociopaths, fuck you. I want my man to know that actually I love him for who he is, what he's done, his failures, everything. The man that stands next to me, I will worship him like he's fucking Cleopatra. He will be my inspiration, he will be my muse, and I will defend him. Not to get... Not to be like Freud, not to quote him, because God forbid we quote Freud, but he made a good point. He said, man protects what he desires most. It's true. I'm not a, I'm not a strong man. I'm not, I, I'm a skinny little tiny queen with a loud fucking and this mouth's gonna get me into a lot of trouble, but hell, have you seen my criminal record anyway? I'm tired of it. I'm a man in love. And I quote this, and I say this, all right? No man is ever complete without his bitch. What I feel that means, it means you are nothing without your partner. You are absolutely nothing. You are just a mere boy. I'm tired of being society's outcast. I'm tired of being the martyr. You pissed off the wrong bitch. Now, you know what's coming for the bitch out of the week, right? You know it's coming. Hold on, boys, because it's coming.
first problem that I have. And believe me, I'm going to mention it. I have a little tiny problem. You know what the problem is? <laughs> I'm taking Paxil. Before I was taking Seroquel because most people thought the antipsychotic would work with most disorders. Unfortunately, that was none of those disorders. They realized the complex stress was a complex post-traumatic stress disorder, which most war vets suffer from is somehow strangely entangled with me. Now they got me on Paxil. Now most people are going to look at this drug and be like, uh-oh, he's a psychotic. Uh-oh, suicidal thoughts. No, see, I don't want to commit suicide. I want to fake my death. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to say it. I want to be able to get rid of Alex Blodgett because Alex Blodgett should have died. Instead, we made him a living martyr. Great. A living martyr. Really? <laughs> this is perfect. So, what does a living martyr do when the audience doesn't want to help? He's got to teach a lesson. Back to the Paxil. Most people are going to say, well, obviously he's suffering from the side effects. You're right, I am suffering from the side effects. I can't have sex! Yeah, I can't have sex. I'm a 31-year-old gay man who can't have sex. Do you understand how frustrating that is? I'm not gorgeous, but God damn it! Look at my ass! Right there! Yeah, I'm so getting this post flat. <laughs> I'm sorry. Now, the problem is, is that the pack soul, what it does is that it's, it, it slows down your desires, your needs, what you want. It, it, it just slows it down. And unfortunately... I have not been able to want the desire to sleep with somebody, but when I do, it lasts for about five minutes. I can get hard, but uh, my attention just goes, oh, cookies! <laughs> I can see the boyfriend. Uh, uh, honey, uh, what, what the fuck? Can you imagine me at an orgy? Oh, Jesus, this, this is not going to work. <laughs> You're going to have to get one of these kind of chairs to follow me around. Would you stay the fuck still? All right. So, that's my problem with facts. I, I, <laughs> uh, I have not gotten off. I'm sorry to share this. I have not gotten off. In two weeks. Two weeks. I mean, I'm trying to yank it, and I can't. I don't desire it. Somebody's going to have to tie me down and do something. Most likely probably kill me. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Sorry. My drive has been crushed. So, thanks, Paxel. You're going to have to put me on something else. Klonopin? Uh, I don't know. Let's see. I'll just tell you I have no insurance. So, the next thing that we're going to talk about, um, where I have a problem. A real big problem. As you know, I got six different charges on me. Yeah, I accumulated those. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm the, I was the naive idiot at that time. But, yeah, I had my reasons to do what I did. I am in convicted felon. 
I took on a charge, an aggravated assault number three, assault with a deadly weapon. I used a metal rod on my ex-lover for almost seven years. He was abusive. He did many things to me. It took a long time to get where I was at, where I am at today. But I have to suffer the consequences for what I did. Suffer that I defended myself. I keep remembering his words. I want my life back. I want my fucking youth back! The companies like LexisNexis and other companies that do background checks. Here is the problem with being a convicted felon. We as a society judge and then let them go. Castrating them. And then let them run around with no place to turn. And that's the reason why they become second, third, fourth, Offenders! Thanks to companies like that, they try to make it so black and white that somebody goes, Oh, you have a record, can't touch you. But yet, we give those who are drug addicts. The second and third chance. Bullshit. Pull a plug. You see where this anger is coming from? My issue with those companies is that we post up their charges, but that client cannot move their mouse. Right on it and go, you know what? They have a charge. They have an aggravated assault number three. Let's find out the nitty gritty about those details and why the perp felt like it was necessary to do that. Then let the employer decide. That's my problem. Do you understand where I'm coming from now? So. I used to say, and I put this on the wishing tree over at the um, MoMA in New York City. I wished to overcome my suppressors and to live life with all full emotion. You have to know and feel and accept and tolerate and engage with all those things, all those emotions, the negative and the positive, and embrace it. I want my man to know that I love him. And then I would do anything for him. And because of my past, I can't have him. I'm going to tell you a little story, and then I'm going to hit my main point.
I'm gonna title this one. The Institution of Marriage. But first, we're gonna talk about what made me become that whistleblower. <clears throat> so, here it goes. What made me become this whistleblower? Why did I become this whistleblower? Why do I think it's necessary to become this whistleblower? <clears throat> I fell for somebody. Again. <laughs> I fell in love. I fell in love. I fell in love again. Now let me describe the feeling of this feeling of true love. Not lost. There's a difference. A difference. Love. I don't know how many of you have been to Keensburg, New Jersey. It's kind of a lower side of um, carnival rides. Used to be a ride that I used to ride on. Some of it's called the Buccaneer, other it's called Pharaoh's Fury. It's this ride that goes back and forth, but progresses higher and higher. And I'll tell you how it relates. Times I've actually I think of them. I walked them to paradise because actually I was trying to get a hold of somebody that was somewhat of a a writer for Out in New Jersey magazine. He knew me of my past back in Jackson, New Jersey, and probably could have helped me and benefit me since I was doing this float for the Pride Center of New Jersey. I figured he may be able to help me out, you know, a little bit of publicity or something. Then I saw that that night, same night, performing was Mr. Johnny Hazard. Oh, boy. I never met him before. Never had the pleasure to. But, turns out he was performing. Mr. Frankie Valentino. Mmm. The things I used to think about when I was in my little apartment with my cat. Renting out. Yeah, I would never rent out his movies, though. Because I knew if I rented out the movie, I'd never return it. <laughs> but. Always follow. Oh, fuck. Anyway, so I go to this club, right? I go to this club. And I walk in. Now, meanwhile, uh, mean, just to tell you, I've never been to this club after what happened with Cliff. So it's been like almost over five years back into the scene. And I told my, my ex-lover that actually, expect us, the shit is gonna hit the fan. So, surprise! So I walk into this bar, the music's pumping. <clears throat> okay, everybody's you know, doing their thing. I walk around a little bit, I go over to the front bar. I ordered myself an import, because I love me an import. I also love cherry wheat beer. I have a big thing for cherry wheat beer, like a lot. Maybe should I make up a wish list? Cherry wheat beer. <clears throat> anyway, so I ordered myself a Heineken. Nice green bottle. Love green, love the color of green. Anything green, send it this way, baby. So, I order the Heineken and I look up. 
And in a darkened corner, guess who's standing right across from her? The one and only Frankie. Now I'm like this, oh shit. And first it's just like, he's so tiny. He's smaller than me! Now, now I'm just like, oh my, oh my, it's so cute! <laughs> and then he looks up. And we are locked. Now, I don't know how every other guy felt this, but I know I did. He looks up and we lock eyes. He looks, and he has that, that, that what the, f not like what the fuck gross repel look, but like what the fuck. Y you know that look. Now, when I was telling you about that ride back in Kingsburg, I'm stopping the store beat there. This is what I meant about the feeling of, I'm not going to call it true love because I, I, I don't, I know how I felt. I don't, I don't know what he felt, but I do know one thing for certain. When I finish this story, you'll understand why. And all those little boys, all those gay boys, this is the difference. You'll know it when you experience it. This is what happened. He starts to approach. Now, all of a sudden, I felt like that ride. You sit on this ride and you go back and forth progressing. And you hear, mm, mm. and I'll go back and forth. And you get this feeling in your gut, this euphoric sensation. It almost leaves you breathless. Not that you can't breathe, but it, it's, it's, it's such, such, it's such a, oh! <sighs> That's what I felt with him. The closer that he approached me, the more higher it felt like I was progressing. And it grew tighter and tighter. And, <sighs> <sighs> oh. I am I'm, I'm, I'm like dizzy right now. I'm full of dizzy spells. I, I oh God, I, I'm burning up. <laughs> I feel like it right now. <laughs> no, I didn't slam. Dude, maybe, maybe it's maybe it's the wine. <laughs> Cheers, bitches. Okay. All right. So he walks past. And I'm like, oh shit. He's interested. He's actually fucking interested. <laughs> a, a cover boy. A fucking hot ass actor like that is actually interested in us. <gasps> oh my god. Oh my god, if there's this one. Oh my god, if. It Oh, shit! Fuck! Okay, 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 okay. The fear now kicks in. Look at that. I'm dropping my glasses. The reality now sits in. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I'm interested, too. Oh, no. Oh, no. 
okay, so what do I do? 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 So now my mind's going crazy. It's racing. I'm now becoming impulsive. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. If this bitch ever gets a feeling, like, wait a minute, hold on. This bitch knows who I am. I, I think he knows what I am. But yeah, actually, these bitches that are around in the club will definitely know who I am, and then I'm fucked. So great. What am I gonna do? 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 There goes the whole entire platform for the fucking thing. Great, 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 great. So that's what happens. My mind is like this. Because my, my issue is, is that if a guy like that is interested and engages with me in public, there goes his whole reputation. There goes his whole career. You can't be associated with someone like me. You can't. I wouldn't want that to happen to him or anybody else with that fact. You don't deserve that. I know me. And I know that any man that comes near me is going to be torturing himself being around me. He has to want, he has to know, and he has to choose to be with me. He has to be a strong man. He has to be a strong-minded individual who ain't taking shit from anybody. He knows he needs to know where I'm coming from and what he's getting himself into. And unfortunately, in his situation, and in most men's situation, I mean, it goes back to the doctor, it goes back to any other man that actually has been with me, it goes back to my ex, their reputations, what they have in stake, whether they settle down, whether they, they wanted to have kids, everything that they want becomes tossed in the air because basically my past... This is what happens. I'm like, okay, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? I leave my spot. I grab my beer and I go over to the taboo room. Now, I don't know if you've ever been to Club Paradise in New Jersey. The main floor and then there's a door you go straight through and you hang a right. It's a long hallway that goes into the taboo bar and the um, office area for the hotel. There's usually a door to the side, a couple of pinball machines. You know, everybody's just lounging out talking shit. All right, so, oh boy, I go out, and I was like, okay, if I lose him, I, I, I know he won't follow. I mean, he's got a performance, so he's not going to follow me. He won't follow a trailer trash batch, bitch like me, batch, right? <sighs> he's not going to follow me. No, one, no one's that stupid to follow me. And I'll go into the hallway. I get to about the middle of the hallway, and then all of a sudden, guess what? Guess what? Guess what? <laughs> Who's following? Uh, motherfuckers coming after me like a fucking shark. God damn it! Don't follow! Oh no, it's over. It's over. I go over to the other side, to the door. There's an alarm on the door. I'm fucked! <laughs> oh, I hope that's funny. Anyway. <laughs> oh, 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 man. Yeah. I got screwed. So now he's staring and he's whispering to people. I'm like, oh, no. What is he doing? That's how I know he was interested. The feeling I felt, I don't know if he felt me, the eye contact, that, that engaging feeling, and then him following me down the hallway in front of all these people. It was like the biggest display dance ever. I'm like, oh no, why, why, why? When I walked out, I walked out for a reason. I realized that actually I fell in love again. I 
My mother used to say this, and though actually I hate her. Yes, hate. Not despise. Hate. Because I'd be the first one to say it. If she was on her deathbed, I'd be the first one to yank out that plug and be the last person she sees. But she did say something that actually I do believe. And I'll give her that much credit. <clears throat> don't go looking for love because love will find you when you're not looking for it I didn't expect to fall hard I didn't expect it at all I didn't expect him to be fucking interested. That's the worst part. He was interested. Oh, no. Oh, please. Please tell me you're getting a new boyfriend. Get a new toy. Go the other way. Run! I can't wait to leave these videos to the next generation. <laughs> so what happens next? Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I realized after sitting down and knowing what's going on, I'm like, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, he's interested. Great, 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 new YouTube sensation, right? Oh boy, 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 oh and because of my reputation and what I, I, I lack thereof, I can't have him. He made me feel love. And if I really did love him, I searched basically everything, every thought, every compassionate idea. I can't be with him. He's worked too hard and this happens with other men as well. The doctor that actually I want to see before. They work too hard for where they're at. Are they really going to sacrifice their well-being, their sanity? Their, are they going to make a commitment to a fucking bitch like me with six different charges? A convicted felon? And if they did, should I let them? He deserves better than a trashy bitch like me. A lot of men deserve better. So, I got up and left. Missing the performance. I walked out alone. Because if I really loved him, I would have to let him go. Just like every other man, I have to let him go because of me. I have to suffer for what I did. I have to suffer for defending myself. Love makes you do funny things, doesn't it?
So, here's my story. I'm a man in love. Who can't have it. And so many people have said that actually I need therapy. No, 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 no. See, this is a problem. You know what I need? I need my story told. I need people to understand why these things happen. This process that people go through and why they get stuck in systems and not understanding their feelings and not actually getting the understanding to it. There was something that I felt with this man that actually he saw and I saw that nobody else could see. There was some commonality, some understanding. I could sit there and have a conversation with him and he could understand and not judge me for it. And I always have to let that fucking go because why? Because of my past! So, this is the reason why I'm going on this whistleblowing mission. I'm tired of falling in love and then having it ripped from me and then actually have to torture myself and understand the reason why I can't have it. I'm tired of being emotionally intelligent and no one else is understanding it. I'm going to be a tyrant of love. I am. I'm going to be a tyrant of love. Now here is the issue here. My main, 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 main issue. Like I said, the institution of marriage. The institution. <laughs> yeah, the institution. Cuckoo, cuckoo. I'm not a motherfucking horse. All right. The institution and the process of marriage. Let's think about this. We're running around as we are. Glad that actually we got in this far as a community. But I believe that the community has a couple of issues at hand, and here are mine. Number one, if you notice my Twitter feed, I hate to say this, boys, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We treat Here's, here's the concept. I'm sorry. We treat marriage like, like, it's a, like, like, like it's a fucking driver's license. It's not about marriage equality. It's about the institution. The process about marriage for all. Marriage is a right. Not a fucking privilege. It hurts, it hurts me to say this. It pains me to say this. Because, hey, to the stoners and to the drug users out there, I understand, I get it, you want to have your fun, go ahead. I don't give a shit. But it's bitches like you that abuse the privilege and are now walking around saying, We're getting married. We're getting married. <gasps> Fuck you! You don't deserve it! And here's my reason why. I 
I sacrifice everything for someone I love. And bitches like you get to walk around at the bars laughing hysterically at me, yelling at me, talking crap about me, saying how much of a nitwit I am, and you have no clue what it is to be in a real fucking marriage! My boyfriend's tried killing me! And I still stayed with him because guess what? I didn't understand or I still loved him. Let's work it out, baby. Almost seven years I stayed with that fucking bastard. Yeah, that's right. I had my ring too, baby. A gold band from Whitehall Jewelers that was a fucking goddamn Tanzanite jewelry with diamonds around it. That was my engagement ring. And it went downhill from there. I was 19 at the time. You treat it. It is a right. This is what we're fighting for. But the concept of equality is wrong. It's for all. You want to be equals, but yet you have this bullshit at the bars, and you're fucking actually selling yourself out, not knowing thyself. Marriage that institution in which, believe me, it is an institution, should be treated not as something that you can obtain at the drive at motor vehicles. So this is my idea. Since I had to suffer the consequences of what I did what society casts as wrong. And I have to quote Claudia Draper here. Sorry. Actually, I'm going to switch around a little bit. Claudia Draper said, what was it? Um, no, no, no. I said it. Violence is not the right answer. Or violence is, violence is wrong. And it is. And I was wrong too. But it sure did motherfucking help! And that's what got me here today! You gotta fight for what you want. This is a war! Personally, it is a war. I've been fighting my war for a long time, bitch. Enough with this politically correct fluff. It needs to be said, but it has to be understood where it's coming from. I'm not saying go up to every fucking party boy and punch him in the face. Though actually, I would love to do so. Believe me, I have my long list. But I'm not fighting for that. I'm not ousting you because I have it out for, you know, no unknown reason. Uh, I used to do this and get me the tourniquet. I can't do it anymore. I'm sorry. No, it's nothing like that. I own up to my fucking responsibilities, and I own up to what I did. I don't blame anybody else but me. That's what a real man does. He owns up to his bullshit! Milan says, oh, you're fucking crazy. Enough with the labels, all right? Spare me your semantics. 
Because the crazy bitches are the ones that are fucking drugging themselves up. Fuck you! This is what it is. As for suffering, and I'm sorry that I got off the track, but for suffering, there's no, the marriage, marriage for an overall, for men and women, should be, it should be a probationary period. Three years together. The process should be like, I'm sorry, it, it has to be like immigration. You want to get married? <laughs> Fine. You ain't wasting the court's money. You go through the process. You prove your love to another. Then you get a probationary period. You stick together, proving your love for one another for three years. No divorce, no nothing. You signed it, you stuck with it. There are men and women that are out there that have been with each other for 19, 20, 30 years. And they do not get recognized. And here we are, the future, gonna make an ass out of them? Fuck that! I'll be damned if I let the future do something stupid like that. Three-year probationary period, just like I had to go through three years of probationary period, too. The divorce rate will drop. And people will stay twice before getting married. Thank you, Brittany. No offense. I know it's a publicity stunt, but no more of this shit. We're not denying you marriage. We're just tightening it up. You treat it as a privilege. It should be a right! It's a fucking right! Now as for domestic violence of gay men. That is going to be my platform. You know why? Because I know how it is to be in a real fucking marriage. And if you don't want men like me to be flipping out like this, I suggest you do something about that right now! Down with the equality! It's marriage overall that needs to be refixed! And that is the community's bitch out of the week! You have taken my hope, my dream, and it's not even that high. I want to be there with my lover, and I can't have it! I almost had it! You fucking bitches are ruining it for me! I can't stand this anymore. This is the reason why I'm whistleblowing. Every gay bar, every faggot on the street, you see me coming, you run! You are going to treat me with the respect I deserve! Starting now! You don't want your bar closed? I suggest you treat me with the respect! I'm coming for you, baby! Because I want my fucking boys and I want my man to feel safe. I am a tyrant in love. And I'm sorry.
trying to do this to everyone. But this has to stop. I'm doing this for you. I'm not doing this to be against you. You're fighting for the wrong reasons. You don't understand. You need to really think. I'm sorry for being so angry. I'm sorry for screaming. I am pleading with you. Fix this! I am not that smart. I am not part of the higher educated. But why the hell are these bitches doing this shit who have bachelor's degrees and still won't fix it! You should have seen this coming! There is only one domestic violence group for men and it's in Boston! Really?! I want groups in all states! When the marriage bill passes through, at least these men, these women, will be able to run to their centers and say, I can't, I gotta be out of it, I can't. We need to anticipate. I am anticipating. I am the example. This is what's going to happen in the future if you don't get your shit together.